do you ever wonder, Lord, am I doing right? Am I taking the right? Am I doing what you want me to do? Well, today's lesson is called Confident Love. And we want to look at doing what God wants us to do and doing it, not wondering, am I making the right moves, but having the confidence of knowing as I'm loving somebody, I'm confidently loving them, knowing that I'm doing the will of God. My name is Brother Lou Blackburn. I welcome you to our lesson for today, November 15th of 2020. Now, to put this in context, we are following in the, the unit for this month of loving our fellow believers. And our entire quarter is just about love. How do we show love to one another? So let's take this walk through the Bible here. We're coming from 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 24. If we look at that first verse, this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. I wondered when I first started reading this, well, what is he talking about? Um, and to tell you a little bit, this is John. So this is the Apostle John, not John the Baptist. And decades after Christ has been crucified, he is now working with the church of Ephesus, in fact, writing this letter to them. And where they are, they're being faced with a lot of false prophets, people who said they were of Christ, said they were Christians and believers, but now they're starting to teach some other things. And that's what's causing a little bit of uncertainty among, among believers. And they're wondering, what really should we be doing? And John is saying, hey, hey, go back to the beginning. And what, what's the first thing that we learn? So not necessarily the beginning of his ministry, but let's go back to what did Jesus Christ said. So if we look at uh, the book of St. John, chapter 13, verses 34, 35, it says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So three times in two verses, Jesus Christ is telling us, see, if you were reading this in the Bible, you, you'd see this is red letter right here. He's telling us to love one another. So there might be some importance there. I want you to think for a moment. Is there a friend? Now I'm saying friend, so not someone living in your house, not even a relative, because sometimes we think with family, oh, I can say this and we've gone through things before they'll get over it. No, nope. think about a friend that maybe you've had for years. You may not even talk every day or every week, but you never ever want to take a chance on hurting them. You don't want to hurt their feelings. If there's something they need, you want to get it to them as quickly as possible. But that person who, or you may have a number of people that you do not want them to hurt, that's the kind of love that we should be having for everybody. That's our goal. To have that kind of love for everybody. And we're going to work on, on how do we do that. There are three books that I really, that have changed me over the last, say, five to ten years. One is The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. And our, our church went through the 40 Days of Purpose campaign, uh, I'd say, well over ten years ago. And that did some things. Another is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And I've learned quite a bit and grown quite a bit from that. The third one is how to win friends and influence people. And that's by Dale Carnegie. And some people think that that's a bit superficial. In fact, within Seven Habits, uh, Stephen Covey actually criticized the book in a kind of veiled way. But it's not. It's not just how do I get someone to buy something for me. It's not just how do I get people to like me and have friends around me. But in the book, it talks about how it wants to change the way people are and change the way people interact with one another. At very first chapter or the very first lesson of that book says, don't complain. I'm sorry, don't criticize, complain or condemn. That seems easy, but it's not. Think about all the criticisms you have when you're driving around and you see somebody that's not with you or somebody tells you about this person that did something on their job. How do we reduce our criticisms? Because we want to love more. We want to love everybody. We want to give everybody that love, that same love that we have for that friend we don't want to hurt. But we know everybody's not like that. What I've learned is that if we can keep the words out of our mouth, not, hey, I don't want to make this public. I don't even want to say it. 
so that no one accidentally hears and even I don't hear it. Keep the criticism out of your mouth. Then it starts to reduce in your head and you stop hearing that voice. You're thinking, well, maybe if I was the same way, if I grew up the same way they did and if I had the same life they did, I might do the same thing. And that whole condemnation thing, at the very end of the, that first chapter of the book, it says, even the Lord himself doesn't condemn a man until the end of his days. Why should we be any different? So why do we want to skip the line and say, wait, wait, wait a minute, God, I got this one because they going to hell. We don't know what's the purpose God has for their life. We don't know what they're later on, what they're going to do later on. That's within God's will. I know a couple of pop stars uh, recently who have professed that, that they've given their lives over to Christ. I'm thinking of Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber and Kanye West. And whatever you want to say about them 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that's one thing. But then they they say they say that they changed their lives and they're showing some actions. They have songs and they have recordings that are sharing the gospel with people. And others are getting into that. I don't know how many fans they had before, how many Twitter followers they had that were listening to what they said before they were Christians. But those same people, the majority of them remain their followers and they want to see what are they talking about after they're Christians. That's something that God has for them in their life. Who knows where it goes? And they're talking to other celebrities and all of a sudden other celebrities saying, yes, I've given my life over to Christ. And so the followers that they had are now listening to what's being said. So don't condemn somebody. Don't criticize because that shuts us off from loving them. That produces a barrier. So how do we reduce that so that we can love one another? Verse 12 says, do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. So what Cain did was the wrong thing. We're often saying, well, no, 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 no. I'm feeling this way because of what somebody else did. Somebody else has put me into this mode. And Christ or Jesus, excuse me, John here is saying, it's about Cain and it's before the murder. So yes, he did murder his brother, but he's saying, why did he murder him? Because his actions, before he gets to the murder, his actions, we're not talking about the sacrifice. And remember Cain and Abel, they both gave their sacrifice. God accepted uh, Abel's sacrifice, his brother's sacrifice, and did not accept Cain's sacrifice. Somewhere in there, Cain did something. It's his reaction to what happened. It may be his reaction to his brother's sacrifice. It may be his reaction to, to God rejecting his offering to him. It's that reaction that we need to change. And you may say, well, well, I don't let people get to me like that. That doesn't really happen. I'm sitting here in mid-November of 2020. Over the last eight years, has there been a president that has upset you? And then how upset do you get? Are your emotions flaring up because you think about something that a president said? You think about some policy that they put in place? Well, that's on you. And God wants us to get to the point that we're not letting other people control our emotions. Let's let the love of God control what we do, how we feel, and then what we say. Now, I'm not saying don't take any type of action. Don't be socially conscious. I'm not saying don't be woke. But don't let somebody else take you out because that's somebody else. The president of the United States, I'm about 99.95% sure that they were never thinking about you when they laid down at night. If they were never thinking about you as they signed some bill, they were never thinking about you as they're giving some speech requesting what they want from Congress. Yet, Sometimes we can let our emotions flare up that we're just so mad. That's our reaction. Let's figure out what kind of reaction God wants us to have. Verses 13 and 14. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We'll come back to that. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. 
that word hate can be kind of strong and says, don't be surprised if the world hates you. So you're going to get criticized. I had a student recently um, working with high school students, and this student was talking about the other schools that he had gone to before getting to high school. And he mentioned he used to go to a private school, that it was a Catholic private school before going to a, a public middle school. And he said, yeah, I went to such and such school, but I'm not really that religious. It really didn't play a part in what he was saying. I didn't ask him about how religious he was. I just asked him what schools he went to or how he grew up, what schools did he go to before that, this particular high school. And I think he felt the need to tell his fellow classmates, I'm not that religious. Why is that? What have we seen before? What have we heard that makes us say, no, don't necessarily put me in that camp? So here's a question that I have, and I hope that you will interact with me as we're going through this. In fact, let me back up for a moment. First question, do you need to criticize less? So let me go ahead and put that in there. But second question, what type of negativity or criticisms do Christians face today? Now, when John is writing this, he's a first century Christian. These are people who are going against what others have believed. And if you say you're a Christian, they're coming after you. They're ready to beat you up. They might be ready to kill you. Remember, Jesus Christ was killed for being Jesus Christ, for saying what he's saying, for getting other people to believe in him. He is crucified for converting other people to become Christians. We don't face that same type of hate, but the world still, those who are non-believers, sometimes they still come after us. So that question number two, what are the negativities and the criticisms that we Christians face? But then at verse 14, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. So we know, that's the part, we know that we're not in that anymore. We're now on the life side because we love our brothers. Those who are also have passed from death to life with us. And I hope that you're sharing. One of the things I love about Sunday school is I do get to learn from others, others that have different experiences from mine and usually have a lot more experiences in life than I do, but we get to share and hear from each other. So I hope you're putting that in chat today. But let's go back to that, those angry faces. Verse 15 says, anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that murderers, that a mur that excuse me, you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. And you may be saying, oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not a murderer. I don't murder anybody. That's not who I am. Now, I may, you know, dislike somebody. I may criticize. I may have those emotions. But no, I'm not a murderer. So let's jump to this. You have heard that. You have heard that it was said, this, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 22. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. If I tell you I hate someone, or if I ask you, do you hate someone? So let me not put it on me, let me put it on you. Do you hate someone? Is there a name or face that pops up? I used to do that, I went through it. Of There was somebody, whenever I had heard the word hate, I had to wonder, do I hate somebody? Mainly because of these verses. It's like, I'm going through my life, I'm doing what I believe I was supposed to be doing, I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm helping other people. This person, and then it fell to two people. That first time we went through uh, 40 Days of Purpose, and I'm reading through the Purpose Driven Life, I think it was around chapter 20 or 21. It's talking about forgiveness. And in the book, it says, hey, if there's somebody that you're harboring something against, go right now and take some type of action. And I did. I had to close the book right then and reach out to, there were two people at the time. I reached out to one of them. 
And I said, hey, we need to talk. And nothing against you. I just need to get this off of me. I need to say it. I need to say what my part was, but I'm releasing it. So that might be you. And you might have that one person. So it's not your whole body that you say, no, you shouldn't. God shouldn't send my whole body to hell. It's just an arm's worth of hate that I have. Well, okay. Maybe God won't send all of you to hell. God will say, no, all of you doesn't go to hell. You don't have to get into that fire of fire of hell. Just take your arm, lay on the bank of the lake of fire and stick your arm in it. Cause that's that arm that has the hate in it. And you say, well, brother Blackburn, well, that, that's ridiculous. It's not my arm. That's too much. There's only one person. It's just a pinky's worth of hell. All right. Lay on the bank of the lake of fire and stick your pinky into the lake of fire because that's part that goes to hell. Let me tell you, if you got to stick your, your pinky and hold it into the lake of fire, you're in hell. So let's fix this pinky. Let's actually do something, take some type of action to show love to people. Let's reduce the hate that we have. Verse 16, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Laying down our lives. I can appreciate the military. I can appreciate um, police officers. Because to me, I have a formula for love. It's a mathematical formula. I'm a math nerd. How much are you willing to sacrifice for someone? Times, what's the chance that you actually have to sacrifice it? So you may say, hey, I'm willing to give up my life. Very little chance that I'll actually have to give up my life. Those people who that's their profession, that on any given day, they don't know if a gun is going to be pointed at them, be it the military, be it police officers. Hey, we're going through a virus right now and pandemic, whereas people are tell everyone is telling us, stay away from people because they may be sick. Well, I thank God for those healthcare workers because they have to go to work and put themselves in the position in which people come to them and say, hey, I might be sick. Everyone else, stay away from everyone because they might be sick. Those sick people are going to our healthcare workers. So there's a greater chance. But then the magnitude, what if we take that smaller? There's a good chance that we'll come in contact with a brother or sister, with, with someone from our church family, someone from a church that we used to go to, that they're in need of something. What can we give, even if it's a little bit? Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to give up? And it might be something that's big. It might be something small, but small. But what are we willing to sacrifice? This picture here, I didn't want to have just a big mountain climber, but somebody's giving up something. If you're climbing up a hill, if you're climbing anything, you're trying to move up. You're trying to go to another level. That's your goal. Your priority is to go higher. Can you pause that? Can you sacrifice that to help somebody else with their priorities, help them with their goals? That's the tricky part. Now we see lay down our lives. For most of us, our lives are the things that we do every day, taking care of our priorities. How can we take somebody else's priorities when we have our list that we're doing every day? How can we take somebody else and say, let me help them with what they want to do? even before I take care of some of my items. Verse 17, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Do something. I have to tell myself, and I need to put this, I've been saying this for months. I need to write it, print it, do whatever, and just put it around my house to say move because that's what I need to do. But even when we're thinking of people, when we're talking about people, when we're talking to people, let's do something. Place a call. If you really want to talk to somebody, give a call to somebody that may not be expecting it. Give a call to somebody that is not on your calendar right now. That's taking up some time. Find out what's going on in their life. Sometimes people are wondering, does anybody care about me? Sometimes you may call somebody, they weren't even wondering if you care about them, but they're happy to know that you do. I have to watch myself at times when I'm driving along, and you know, you get to a red light, 
maybe you're on the side of a freeway or whatever the case may be, and there's somebody there who's in need. I, I've, I've, I'm moving my mind sometimes, and I have to remind myself, don't just ignore them. So many people ignore them. What can I do? How can I show love to them? And I know sometimes you don't have the possessions. Sometimes you don't have the money to give somebody when you hear about a need. But what do you have? What can you give this time? Let's just keep that in mind. There was a, a teacher. My, my daughter first started going to school, or early on when she started going to school. And from day one, parent orientation, she rubbed me the wrong way. I asked a question and she didn't give me an answer. So I asked the question again. I wanted clarification and she got sarcastic with it. That wasn't a nice thing. And this went on. She ended up not being my child's teacher. But from that day of that parent orientation, I still remember it. I just did not like her. We got to the second school year and I finally said, I got to do something. Going back to that purpose driven life where, hey, go take some action and get it right. I realized at the time I was working for Hewlett Packard. So HP, we had this wonderful giving program, donation program. We could donate to schools and nonprofits and only pay 25 percent of the, the list cost. One day I said, she needs a computer in her classroom. I need to do that to get me over this. You know, the Bible tells us where your money goes, there your heart will be also. I had to do it. And so, yes, she got a laptop computer for her class. And by the way, I don't work for the company. And even if you know somebody that does, they don't have the same giving program. Don't put that in the chat. But, or don't put your request in the chat. But um, yeah, that moved. I had to do something. It can't just be, oh, I like them now. It's okay. I'm good. Because I've let that happen before too. You think that over time, you're good with somebody. But all of a sudden, somebody mentions their name. And it's like, hmm, I wasn't good. I just didn't have to think about them. Now, that teacher and I, we're good now. We're Facebook friends, and we're for, don't try to guess who it is. But uh, yeah, we're fine after I did something and took some type of action. So let's not just say that we love. Let's show. Love is an action, not a feeling. It's not a movie or a romantic comedy TV show. We have to do something. Here's a third question. Help me out with this. What is one action you can take to show love to another believer? I want to read because you may have some action that you can do that maybe I need to do it also. Or maybe somebody else is going to, uh, will read your comment and say, yeah, that does sound good. I need to do that. Go ahead and put that down. That's your third question. I think that's the only one, the last one that I have for today. First John chapter four, verse 20 says, if anyone says I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, who has, who he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. I know we say we feel God and God is all around us, but we have, we have fellow believers who are all around us. And if there's some reason that we're harboring something against them and we don't love them, we can't love God because we're not following his commandment. Verse 18, John is saying, this then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. So let me go back to that beginning. Are you ever wondering, am I doing what God wants us to do? And he's saying, don't let your heart question you like that. Don't let your heart convict you so much that you're not sure. Let me go back to this. We know that we belong to the truth whenever our hearts condemn us because God is greater than our hearts. So God is looking at what we do. God is knowing the actions, the love actions that we take for other people. And as long as we're doing that, God is right there to love us. He's not looking at you with any side eye. He's not waiting for you to be more convicted of what's going on in your life. But the question is, are we as generous as we should be? Are we giving as much money of our money 
as much of our possessions, as much as of our time as we can. I'm not saying wear yourself out. I'm not. And everybody will say, well, I can always give more. Are you giving enough for what God wants you to do? Verse 21, dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. Going back to those commands, what does he command? Love one another, love God. We're going to get more into it. I'm jumping ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But we want to have this confidence. Don't let anything hold us back. We want to be free because there are other things God may want us to do. But let's start with this first part. As long as we're loving, let's go back to that picture or imagine going back to that picture of God giving you that hug. As long as we're doing what he tells us, as long as we're doing what pleases him. My children have young children. They're 8, 11 and 14. And I'll sometimes uh, say to them, let's take the dining room, for instance. I'll tell one of them, hey, come clean the dining room. I may tell all three of them, hey, come clean the, come clean the dining room, come clean the kitchen. And one of them will come and, and what do they say? All right, I got my stuff. That's not what I want. I, I didn't ask you to come and get your stuff out of the dining room. I said, come clean the dining room. It's time for dinner. I, I want all this stuff away. And then I, I eventually have to tell them every now and then, hey, if you will just do what daddy wants, then you'll be the one that he likes today. I love them all every day. And I tell them that, hey, I'm going to love you, but try to focus on what I want, not just the little bit that you want to take care of. Don't just do the stuff you want to do. What is it that's going to please daddy? If you can please daddy, then have the confidence that daddy is going to be right there with you, whatever you want on that day, whatever you want this week. God is always with us, but if we can find a way to please him, oh, wow. Verse 23, and this is his command. So go back to what's going to please him, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Do that. That pleases him. Start there. Then have the confidence of knowing you got it covered. Believe in Jesus Christ. Love one another. Verse 24, those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. We got to work on it. Remember when I talked about the criticisms? It's a process. Reduce the words that come out of your mouth. Be careful and, and be careful. Other people around you, they're going to keep criticizing. Let them know, hey, I'm trying to reduce the criticism. They're still going to do it. But when you reduce the words that come out of your mouth, you're reducing that thinking. It's a process. You can't do it by tomorrow. And that part about, hey, how do I not let my emotions get the most of me when I think about the president, whichever one you may be thinking about? Or how do I not let some manager at my job get to me? It's a process. It's going to take a while. But as you're doing that, that spirit of, of Christ is in you. That's when you know, when you see the change, when you'll be able to look back and say, yep, I don't do that as much. I am open. I am free to love more. That as I'm doing it, I'm loving confidently. I'm living this because that's the way God wants me to live. I hope you've been helped by it. I hope that you take it to heart. Not to, I hope you're answering the questions down there. Be a part of this class. Be a part of our group because we love you. I love you because you're a part of us. And because you're a part of us, I love you. And I hope you're loving fellow believers as well. Amen? Amen.